Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we have got a fun battle vid for you today. And it's between three devices that a lot of people are looking to check out. I am talking about the brand new Pixel 5, as well as also the OnePlus 8T, and of course the Galaxy S20 FE, which Samsung kind of threw out of left field. Now, these three devices will be taking a look at gaming, as you would expect, uh, also do a speaker test, uh, and then we'll check out the cameras and find out which is the best one for you. Now, let us start off with just looking at some of the hardware as we get into gaming for these devices. We'll start off with the Pixel 5. Now, the Pixel 5 comes in at six inches. It's got an OLED display, lovely looking display. Uh, it's also a 90 hertz display. So again, for us gamers, that is really important. Now, underneath the hood, we have a Snapdragon 765 5G uh, processor paired with, uh, with eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. And it's also got a 4,000 80 milliamp battery with 18 watt charging. So faster charging there and a sizable battery, if you will. Now the OnePlus 8T comes in at 6.55 inches. It's a fluid AMOLED display, 120 hertz. So faster refresh rate for our gaming needs. It's powered by the Snapdragon 865 processor. So a higher processor here. We'll see how that differs in terms of the kind of games we're gonna be playing. Uh, but it also comes with in the US, by the way, 12 gigs of RAM and uh, 256 gigabytes of storage. That's what we have here in the US in this aquamarine color. Now it's got a 4,500 milliamp battery and a whopping 65 watt charger. Whew, that's insane. Now, when we move over to the Galaxy S S20 FE, that comes with a 6.5 inch display. It's a super AMOLED 120 hertz display. So we love to see that here. Underneath the hood is the Snapdragon 865 uh, processor, and this comes with six gigs of RAM, 120 gigabytes of storage, uh, and it does have a 4,500 milliamp uh, battery, but it comes with a 15 watt charging. Now, in terms of charging, which has the fastest charging, hands down, it's gonna be the One OnePlus 8T. That 65 watt charger is fast. I'm not showing you the speed yet because I've got a special video for you guys to check out. So use the link and check that out. Or I'll be dropping that tomorrow on the channel. For the gaming section of this video, we looked at three games. And I'm gonna start off with the very first one that's pretty easy and, and basic for a lot of reasons. Call of Duty Mobile. That's one that can be played on a lot of systems. And we're able to go to max settings on all three devices, even though the, uh, the Pixel 5 has a 765 processor and was able to play all three at 60 frames per second, Pixel 5, OnePlus 8T, and the Galaxy S20 FE, and its uh, stability was 100%. So that's actually good to see here. Now, when we move over to uh, our Vainglory, that's also quite interesting because we saw some interesting aspects here. We know, of course, Vainglory supports higher refresh rates, and it was it, it showed with the Pixel 5 running at 90 frames per second. So that was actually good to see. While the OnePlus 8T ran at uh, 120 frames per second, again, with 100% stability, so that was good. But the um, Galaxy S20 FE still ran at 59 frames per second. It looks like that update isn't there yet for this game, but that is what you'll be getting at this current point in time. Uh, so just putting that out there for you guys to know. Now, in terms of performance, we took a look at uh, PUBG Mobile, and this is where things differ. So starting off with the Pixel 5, PUBG Mobile can only run at smooth, uh, and the settings were not to the max settings uh, for the game, and we're getting 40 frames per second. So again, because of the 765G, it doesn't support Ultra HD settings, we had to go to a lower setting to play PUBG Mobile on the Pixel 5. Now, when we move over to the OnePlus 8T, and the Galaxy S20 FE. This is where we saw both of them running at Ultra HD, the highest settings, and both of them achieved 40 frames per second for that, and that is to be expected. That is just an industry standard right now with the 865 processor for those settings. Now, when we move over to Smooth Extreme, which is, you can say, your next best, uh, we're able to get 60 frames per second for both the AT and the S20 FE. So performance there was actually uh, really good. Now, when we switch over to temperatures, this is where everything gets really interesting. The two hottest devices were the Pixel 5 and the Galaxy S20 FE at both 103 degrees after we played for about an hour of gameplay. So it ran rather warm for both of them. While the OnePlus 8T ran much cooler 
at 97 degrees. So that was actually good to see with OnePlus, especially, of course, this was done after playing PUBG with all three devices. So you can see that this is where the OnePlus actually stands. Now, when it comes to speakers, they all have stereo speakers with uh, both the OnePlus 8T and the S20 FE, both having Dolby Atmos as well. So that was activated for this test. And I want you guys to listen to speakers from all three, and then we'll go ahead and continue. All right, so the speaker tests were done and it's quite clear the Pixel 5 speakers are really low. To me, it felt like they were the same speakers from the Pixel 4 on a smaller device and put into the Pixel 5 on a, at least a larger device. And you can hear the smaller uh, audio range, if you will. It's not as loud. Also, the mids and highs are pretty close together, so everything sounds really crunched as opposed to the um, the 8T and the Galaxy S20 FE, which had a much wider range. I kind of like the uh, the S20 FE in terms of the range and sound. I thought the 8T was just a tad bit louder because that's what you have in terms of speakers for both devices. Now, that's all, all nice and good, but the one last thing, of course, you want to see on these devices are the cameras. Now, in terms of cameras, the Pixel 5 has an eight megapixel front facing camera. The uh, OnePlus 8T has a 32 megapixel and the Galaxy S20 FE has a 32 megapixel front facing camera. The rear camera is a little bit different. The Pixel has dual cameras, 12 megapixel and a 60 megapixel ultra wide, while the OnePlus has a multiple dual cameras, a 40 megapixel, a 16, a five and a two. Uh, in that order, while the Galaxy has three, a 12, an eight, and a 12. Now, let's go ahead and take some photos and videos and see how well they actually perform. So looking at video first, apologize for it's been just rainy and overcast, uh, 4K 60 shot on all cameras. The Pixel is trying to shift to compensate to stabilize don't really like it that much. OnePlus 8T is doing a really good job as well as also the Galaxy S20 FE. I think it's almost a tie for the FE and the OnePlus 8T. Really solid performance. Maybe the 8T does better in some aspects while the, of course, the Pixel 5 is pretty much at the end of the list. But again, much improved. I think solid overall for 4K 60. Now, when we go to the front facing camera, all look pretty good. The Galaxy S20 FE is a little bit softer on the top of my forehead. Uh, the uh, OnePlus 8 is a little bit sharper. Pixel is pretty solid all around. Now, in terms of colors, the Galaxy's colors are actually much closer. I do like all these, although the OnePlus 8T has a little bit more of that oversaturation, making me look more, more reddish in my face than I should be. Now, a rare uh, portrait photos, the Galaxy S20 FE is my best right here. I like the positioning, I like the colors, then the Pixel, then the OnePlus 8T, but 
I really like what the FE is doing here with the rare portrait shot. This one as well, you can see again, the colors are much better on the FE as opposed to the, there's a little bit more of a saturation on the one, I'm oh, sorry, of a saturation on the pixel. The one plus is just kind of flat in tone. Um, now, when we go to some outdoor shots, this is the ultra wide lens. They all look good. The, the pixel looks a little bit brighter, even though they're all taken around the same time. Uh, this is just a standard uh, wide shot for all of them. I do like the color representation on the uh, the FE and the OnePlus because they're more accurate than the pixel at that point in time of the day. Now, this is just a zoom shot here with the pixel at 2x. Uh, the OnePlus is at uh, 2, and then, of course, the Galaxy is at 3x. And as you know quite well, the Galaxy does do 10, 20. So this is a 10, and this is a 30x zoom, just to give you a nice idea of what it does. Now, nighttime video. This is where it's quite interesting, where the pixel is the busiest but most stable the clearest is the one plus and the shakiest is the galaxy s20 fe we can clearly see everything in any of those videos now in terms of front facing cameras the one plus 8t is the darkest here pixel is the brightest but noisiest while the galaxy is softer and you can, but you still can still see clearly in those photos this also is a nice photo where a lot of people will pick the pixel though the galaxy gives you the best representation of lighting but it's still visible around and the galaxy is also the sharpest now this is an ultra wide in low light condition you can see what the one plus at does the pixel is definitely brighter but the sharper image is the galaxy s20 fe and much clearer this image here is outdoors again low light where i do like what the pixel and the fe do well the one plus at is nice uh it's a little bit uh orangey but i think overall solid as well as also the next image here where the both the pixel 5 and the fe look really good while the one plus at has a little bit of that orange tint but the pixel again shows its extra brightness in terms of low light conditions in the camera department this is why i expected the, the pixel to excel it a bit more and it definitely does the job in low light photography i thought that it was a bit brighter and, and sharper in certain aspects, but the S20 FE was no slouch as well. Uh, the OnePlus 8T has shown more improvements again with OnePlus, but I'll put that as the third camera in terms of photo options. In terms of video, I think the FE takes a slight edge, but OnePlus shows some really good improvements overall, and Pixel also moved forward as well. We didn't do any audio test again, but that's just showing you what we actually captured there uh, in terms of the uh, the recordings from each of the cameras, but I thought, you know, altogether you'd be quite impressed with the cameras and this devices as you see them. So the final thing we want to look at is price. The Pixel 5 costs $700. The OnePlus um, HT is priced at $749, but it does have the larger amount of memory and also storage compared to both devices, while the Galaxy S20 FE is priced uh, at $700 for the 5G variant and the 4G variant is priced at $600. So for me, what is the best device to go with? I would say it's the S20 FE. I think it gives you the best bang for your buck in covering all the aspects you're looking for in device. I think in terms of camera and photo quality, Pixel has the edge there. I think in terms of overall performance, uh, speakers, gaming, the S20 FE is a solid buy. I think if you wanna max out everything, then the OnePlus AT kinda of sneaks in there with that 12 gigs of RAM. And again, it's a really solid device. Honestly, you really can't go wrong with any of them, but for me, the S20 FE is just the better buy because it covers all the boxes that we mentioned uh, quite well, and I think it does a good job at its price point. But the Pixel 5 and the OnePlus 8 are no slouches as well. But in terms of gaming, you no, know, as you expect in this channel, you definitely want to go with the FE or the OnePlus 8T. So if you have any questions or any comments, guys, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. If you want to look at any of these devices, use the links down below. If you want to check out gaming specifically on the AT and the Pixel 5, I have those gaming videos as well. I'll link them for you guys to check out. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.